The name of this report that I put together on my laptop is called The Origin of Hatred Towards Trump. Ever since Mr. Donald J. Trump became the 45th President of the United States, many groups from different corners of America elevated their voices against the new Commander-in-Chief. Before he threw his hat into the 2016 election, a great majority of Democrats had no problems with Trump. In fact, many of them, including former President Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, whined and dined with him in the past. For years, millions of Americans from both political parties tuned in to watch The Apprentice, The Miss Universe, and Miss USA beauty pageants, all ran by Donald Trump. So where exactly did the hatred towards the new president come from? Why is there a huge cloud of intolerance hovering over this nation? What is causing famous people like Robert De Niro, Samuel Jackson, Spike Lee, Chris Evans, Meghan McCain, and many others to lash out against the leader of this country? The answer to these questions are located in the Bible. The scriptures clearly describe the origin of the problem that we are currently facing. In the New Testament, from the book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 through 15, contains a significant fact that will help us see what's really going on all around us. This particular chapter is about Jesus being delivered to Pontius Pilate by the Jews. I'm going to read the whole context so that you will understand my point. Beginning with verse 1, very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked them, are you, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom of the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison for murder. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest has handed Jesus over to them, to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. That's the context. Now let's dig deeper within the actions of the Jews as they were stirring up the crowd, I repeat, as they were stirring up the spectators, the driving forces behind their decision consisted of the nature of Adam and the kingdom of Satan. For now, let's focus on the devil. It was him who was working through the Jewish establishment at that time with the intent to bring forth the death of Jesus Christ. From the moment Mary the Virgin became pregnant, Satan was already coming up with ways to mislead the minds of the scribes and the Pharisees. He even manipulated Judas Iscariot just to make sure that things would go according to plan. And how did he manage all of this? By simply stirring up the unbelieving Jewish community according to Mark chapter 15. Now let's turn our attention to Adam's nature. It's in all of us. Every person from the beginning of human history was born with this awful inheritance. After the death of Abel by the hands of his brother Cain, this sinful nature increased over the centuries. By the time Jesus appeared on the scene, 
the characteristics of Adam's nature polluted the hearts of the Hebrews. With Satan by their side, together they stirred up the crowd with arrogance, bitterness, and deceit. Now, what does that have to do with the hatred towards Trump? Let me put it to you this way. The tactics that Satan used during the ministry of Christ are the same exact strategies that he is using today. <clears throat> Throughout this video, you will hear me say stirring up because that's precisely what Satan is doing. He's stirring up the crowds of our civilization with deception. He's deliberately provoking the media. Hollywood, famous athletes, politicians from both sides, college campuses, secular corporations, and other industries, because the devil knows that their influences can easily lead people far away from the truth of God. Did you know that the Lord placed Donald Trump in the Oval Office? Don't take it from me. Let us examine the mindset of King Nebuchadnezzar regarding people in power. In the book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 21, the king came to the conclusion that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whom have, whomever he chooses. In other words, God gave Trump the keys to the presidency and Satan knows this. He knows that the Lord will select certain individuals just so that his plans will come to pass. For example... May 14th, 1948, the Jews reclaimed their ancient land, Israel, a couple of years after World War II. President Harry Truman publicly acknowledged the newly declared state of Israel. He was the first president in history to make that type of announcement. That being said, God chose Truman just so that this man at that time would be the one who would defend Israel's declaration of independence. Soon after, Satan stirred up the Arab nations around Israel because his appetite for divisiveness has no limitations. Now, let's fast forward to December 6, 2017. On that historical day, President Trump officially recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. As soon as the news broke out, Satan once again stirred up the countries of the world. So now you know where the hatred towards Donald Trump is coming from. It is coming from a source that despises all of us. The devil can't stand Democrats, Republicans, Independents, you name it. Even before he convinced some of the angels to rebel against God, he couldn't stand them either. Therefore, Satan has absolutely no favorites whatsoever. The last part of this report is directed towards my people, the followers of Christ. I'm aware of the fact that many believers voted against Trump because they felt that he is not the right man for the job. While others amplified their opinions, some have decided not to participate in the voting process completely. Nevertheless, God's word must reign supreme over our personal perspectives. The Lord expects us to pray, not just for President Trump, but for all leaders in this country, including the Democrats. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it says, Here then is my charge. First, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving should be made on behalf of all men for kings and rulers in positions of responsibility so that our common life may be lived in peace and quiet with a proper sense of God and our responsibility to him for what we do with our lives. In the sight of God, our Savior, this is undoubtedly the right thing to pray for. For his purpose is that all men should be saved and come to realize the truth. Therefore, my brethren, never forget the root cause of the animosity towards the Trump administration. The opposers might appear to be enemies of the president, 
but it is the puppeteers inside of the bigger picture that's adding fuel to the raging inferno in America. These secretive conspirators are purposely developing meaningless arguments so that we will continue to fight against each other. As long as the hidden kings manage to keep their distractions going, they will proceed with their evil agendas without anyone notice, noticing. They are the real adversaries, not the general public. The Apostle Paul said it best in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. This is the Preacher Man signing out. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and your families. And in Christ's holy name, I say amen. Peace.